Hello Floss Tube. This is AM Dreaming Stitcher. It's been a few weeks, but I just suddenly looked up and thought, I bet you could do an update today. It just happens to be a good time for it. And I was about a minute and a half into it when the doorbell rang. Nobody ever comes to my door. They did. Anyway, they're gone and I thought you still have time to do an update. So it's been a few weeks. Um, I haven't been up to a whole lot except for spending a lot of money that I shouldn't have spent. I am not showing those now. I have still been, well no I haven't still been. I did film uh, a number of Sable videos that I know I haven't posted yet. I've mentioned them in the last couple of videos. I kind of stopped filming for a while because I was overwhelmed by um, how much there was. I'm, I'm really kind of appalled with myself. So I am not on a stash diet at this point. I am on a an all-around don't buy anything if you don't need it diet. And that came out of I guess the final straw was buying a kit recently that was extraordinarily expensive and there was nothing special about it. It's just fabric, floss, and a pattern. It's not like it's got a whole lot of special materials or anything. I have not started it yet. Um, I'm not sure at what point I will start it, but it's going to be the next big start I do. I can tell you that much. Anyway, I'm not going to show you any purchases. Well, except one. There, there was a purchase that is actually a finish, so I'll show you that. But I will continue to film stash videos if I can bring myself to continue doing it, and I will eventually post them. In the meantime, let me show you what I've been stitching. Uh, the first finish I have, it's not quite a disaster. It's a little bit of a fiasco, maybe is a better word. And it's entirely my fault because I was lazy and didn't do what pretty much every kit out there tells you to do. But let me just show you and explain it as we go. So the first finish I have is my Monarch Horizons Japanese Koi that I got off of eBay. And it was copyright 1989. And I have showed it to you as I have progressed through it. It is done, although not a fully finished object. And the fiasco, I don't know if it'll be obvious to you or not. It's not as obvious to me anymore. But I did not rinse the floss before I started. And as you can see, there's quite a bit of red and orange red type colors in these fish. I hope you cannot see the pink spots that are there now that it has been washed, but I assure you they exist. They're small, they're not nearly as bad. One of the uh, more obvious ones was kind of here by that fish's fin. It's not showing up on camera, that's good. It might mean that I'm having some success. What I had been doing was just rinsing it repeatedly in cold water. But there is pink there. If, if you look at the, I don't know if you can see, but the white stitching has some pink in it. I don't know. It could be worse. <laughs> it could be worse. I think it has improved with the rinsing. I still like my koi. I still want to finish them up. But I think I will always, always be aware when I look at it that it is pinker than it should have been. And it's hard to tell in this light. And some of it will get covered when it's matted and framed. But yeah, maybe it's not too obvious. Anyway, lesson learned. When they say rinse the floss, they mean it because I knew this was not DMC. I knew it was some other off-brand, you could tell. And I should have washed it. But there they are, my koi. And they are a finish. Fully backstitched, fully everything. They just need to be, you know, maybe rinsed more and ironed and then framed up. Okay, the next piece I worked on was a start that I showed you previously. And he got finished. He, she, 
probably he because it's very colorful. This is Fine Feathers from Serendipity Designs. I told you that I was a bit disappointed in my last video when I showed you the start because the colors of the actual kit don't look anything like that. Well, I can't say anything, but they don't look much like that. However, whether the colors are the same or not, the bird is done. So, there are my fine feathers. He had no back stitching. That was nice for a change. And he's all finished up. I guess I will frame him or something. I never do anything too special with my finishes because I have no talent for that. I don't sew. I'm not interested in buying a bunch of um, trims to do anything fancy with it. I don't decorate my house particularly with things, you know, seasonal or anything. I don't know. I'll just frame him and he will probably go on a shelf somewhere because that's where a lot of my small pieces are. But he's done. Oh, I lied. He'd had a tiny, tiny bit of back stitching in the eye, but that was it. So that's two finishes. I have a third finish, which was a start, which you never got to see, which is um, evidence of the buying spree I was on before I finally went over the top and decided to put a stop to it. Um, I went to visit my sister and she lives like I do in the southwest but several hundred miles away and I got an urge to stitch some southwesty things. We couldn't really find any. She took me to a city that's a couple hours away from her that had a cross stitch shop and we looked for Southwest stuff and they had a nothing but a few NP Designs rug patterns. That was it. They didn't have anything else. But it got me on an NP Designs kick. So I was on eBay and then I bought a bunch of other things other than NP Designs too and we, like I said, I won't go there. It, it was bad. It was a bad month. But um, this was one of the things that came off of eBay and I went ahead and stitched it up. I just would like to remind you that I had done previously another one of their designs that I got years ago when we were on the uh, Navajo Reservation in Northern Arizona. And I had bought this kit and I stitched this up and showed it to you some time ago. But my new one that I purchased when I visited my sister at the end of July, well, late July, and no, I didn't purchase it when I visited her. I ordered it right after visiting her because I suddenly went on a Southwest kick. But um, there's my second pot, all stitched up. They call that, I think, the, the bear paw, but I think it's Zuni remember. Yes, Zuni Bear Paw. And he's not quite the same shape as the turtle pot, but you can see they're definitely related enough to each other that I could frame them up kind of together and let them be a pair, except that I have some patterns for others. I don't think I have any other pot kits, but I do have pot patterns. Anyway, those were my three finishes. And I did go back to one of the works in progress that I have been showing you and finished all the cross stitching for it, but the back stitching has hardly begun. And that is my flock together from this chart, Birds of a Feather Flock Together. And Flock Together is the top one. And I have shown it before. And if you have viewed my videos before, thank you for coming back to put up with yet another one of my crazy videos. But um, here are my 
I'm sure it's terrible light. Here are my birds from the top on down and you can perhaps tell that one of the birds is not like the other. One of the birds is not the same. Little Sesame Street there. Um, Cause he's backstitched. So I did start, let's get that quilt batting out of there. I did start the backstitching and there's our finished bird. And I started on the branch. None of the berries are stitched. None of the stems are stitched. There's a lot of backstitching to go. But the cross stitching is complete. So it's only a matter of time now until that's finished. And I think when it is done, it's my plan to use this scroll frame to go ahead and uh, put on the fabric and get started on Birds of a Feather. Which is why I'm not sure what I will, what my start schedule will be other than that. I just feel like there's so many things I want to do, but they are a pair and I feel like as soon as the first one's finished, at the very least I need to get the other one framed up, I guess you could say. So there we are, back stitching away. And I do, um, to try to keep them clean, I tend to put tissue over them when I'm not actively stitching. I don't know if it keeps the dust out or not, but that's what goes on with the ones that are in frames. Because I do not have project bags, I don't even want to go down that rabbit hole. I have one more start to show you. This I purchased... I don't know if it was on sale or clearance. I think it was clearance from 123 Stitch. And I got it before my Southwest kick started, but really it fits right in with that. I know I brought the chart out. I may pause you for a moment because it looks to me like I've misplaced the picture. I wasn't the chart I meant to say. I've misplaced the um, image. Just a moment and I'll find it. It fell down behind the computer. So, the piece I'm working on is Gila Cliff, Cliff Dwellings National Monument. Which I visited once with a relative. And it's my plan, well, an in-law, it's my plan to do this as a gift because it was kind of a memorable trip that we took. And so that strangeness that you see going on there is um, part of the ruins and the century plant that's growing on the side there, the agave. A lot of filling in to do. This is on 18 count, by the way. Everything else I showed you today was 14 count, but this is 18 count. So smaller stitches. A lot of work to go. Uh, I'm not doing it in my usual manner because generally I work my way up to the top and then do strictly top to bottom. And I sort of started that way because the center of the piece, if you look at the image, you can see it's kind of right about there in the middle of the ruin. And that is where I started. I started in the middle of the ruin and counted my way up in little bits of black until I made it to the top. But then I decided that those little centers for the sentry plant were going to work out better if I put them in before I outlined them. So that's why I say I'm not exactly doing it the way I usually do. So that's my stitching for the last month. I realize it's not a lot. It never is. I am not... I'm not going to say not as dedicated a stitcher as some of you, but just... And I'm not going to say I have more demands on my time. I just I just allocate my time differently, I guess. I allocate my time differently. But um, I wanted to share that with you. I wanted to thank the folks out there who have been doing videos that I've been watching and enjoying. Um, I don't know if thank you is the right word, but I appreciated that a stitch too far in her video let me know that that uh, not me but everybody know that so and so 
was closed. This was not even her most recent video. But that was a shock. I had just ordered from them in, I think, June. Um, had gotten my last order from them, and then at the end of July they are closed. Uh, I liked so-and-so. I liked them a lot, and I am going to miss them. But that's one of the things I learned from watching folks in Floss Tube Land. If you guys weren't out there telling us these things, I guess it would be doubly shocking if I had gone there when I wanted to shop and then found out. That would have been terrible. Anyway, one less place for me to spend my money. And A Stitch Too Far also has been talking about the Bay of Evil. And that's where all my money went in the month of August. Um, I pretty much dived in very deep in late July after I went to see my sister. Um, maybe I will, just because it's sitting here right next to me, maybe I will show you the kit that's sort of the nail in the coffin on my spending. I can't do it anymore. I can't. Um, I'm hoping to retire within a year or less. My income is going to be considerably less than, I mean, <laughs> like half. Um, it's going to be a fixed income with no increase in any foreseeable future until I hit Social Security, which is more than a decade away. My health insurance costs are going to be astronomical until I qualify for Medicare, which is more than a decade away. So I have to stop spending money. I have to stop letting the half of me that's sort of mentally ill take over and make the rational half say, stop spending. So let me show you what may hopefully be my last stash acquisition for a very, very long time, I hope. I have plenty. I will finish filming those Sable videos and you will see. Uh, I have <laughs> enough for so many lifetimes. But I saw this several weeks ago and it was, I didn't think it was at my price point. But somehow recently it came to mind again. And I decided that I was going to, you know, do it. <laughs> and yeah, it was really expensive. I can't tell you why it appeals to me so much. I, I can't put in words why this appeals to me so much. It's from Perman of Copenhagen. It was apparently a limited release. That might account somewhat for the cost of it. It's an Adam and Eve sampler. I have no other Adam and Eve samplers or not anything that I particularly collect. It's monochromatic. I have very few pieces that are monochromatic. I, I just don't know what to say except that I really liked it. I like it now. And as I said, it's not fancy materials or anything. It's just one color of floss and some cream linen. I did shop around a bit. I didn't just dive into the bay. Oh, excuse me. Just bumped you, I think. Um, I saw, for example, that Casa Sanina has it in Europe, but their shipping charges to come to the States made it pretty much about the amount that I spent for this. Um, I saw at least one other online shop that I hadn't didn't know enough about to shop with. I wondered after the fact whether this is something so and so would have actually had, but it's too late now if they had because their shipping would have been reasonable. But whatever, whether I overpaid or didn't overpay doesn't matter because I'm not buying any more. I hope. I just hope I'm not buying any more. This is what I will start soon. Well, I can't say soon. This is what will be my next big start, other than the bird piece when that one's done. But you can expect to see me do other small starts, because as you saw, 
several of the things I'm working on are small. Uh, does just go faster, you get finishes sooner, it makes it feel like you're actually accomplishing something. And most of what I bought in the way of NP designs was small. A lot of the other things I bought were not remotely small, but that's another story for another day. So, why? I don't know. I don't know. Mental illness. I like it. It's lovely. My life would not have been substantially um, different if I hadn't purchased it. I can't say it was a, what do you guys call them, a unicorn chart? I, I'm not entirely sure of the origin of that term, because I didn't even know it existed until a few weeks ago. Um, but I loved it from the moment I saw it. I bought it, and it was expensive enough that I think it shocked me into better behavior. I sure hope so. I sure hope so. So, thank you for tuning in and watching. As I said, this is AM Dreaming Stitcher. I appreciate anybody that sits through my doll videos. And I love looking at the things you all put up. And I had thought of other topics of conversation, but I think I'm going to skip them all. They, they were floss related. They were floss tube and cross stitching related, but I just think today is not the day for it. So thank you very much for watching, and I will, I promise, eventually post those stash videos that I keep talking about. They're just going to take a while to upload. But for people who are interested, I haven't forgotten. I'll see you again sometime, I don't know when, with more progress to show you. And thanks for watching. Have a good month of September because it starts tomorrow. I'm filming this on the 31st, aren't I? No, I'm actually filming it on the 30th. So enjoy the last little bit of August and have a great September. Bye, all.